Contextual alternates. If you're using an OpenType Pro typeface, you likely have a very extended character set. And InDesign's OpenType features will let you take advantage of that. So there are, or there may be, lots of hidden gems in your typeface. And it's not always easy to uncover these hidden gems. Uh, when you are looking on Typekit, you may find some information about the typeface which indicates that there are going to be lots of alternate characters. If the typeface has the word pro after it, that's your chances of there being an extended character set are good. Now, in terms of accessing them, I'm going to come to my preferences and type, no, not type, but advanced type. And there are these two options here, type contextual controls. I've got both of those checked, which means that I can now, on the, on the left I have the before, and on the right I have the after. I can select this character, and then I get this little drop down indicating what alternates are available. And I'd like a queue with a very long tail. Now, the type contextual controls are not always as easy to use as you might like. So instead, you might want to use, and it's just an alternative way of doing it, the glyphs panel. And on the glyphs panel, you want to be showing the stylistic alternates. Is that what I want to be showing? Alternates for selection is what I want to be showing. So when I select this A, here are my alternative A's. And I can really give this piece of type a lot more personality by choosing alternate characters. This is especially true when you're working with script typefaces, which, of course, are a bit of an oxymoron because a script is supposed to look personal and idiosyncratic, but a font that is a script has all of the A's looking exactly like all of the other A's and all of the E's looking like all the other E's. Well, using contextual alternates, you can spice things up. So instead of using that regular F, I would like to use that F with a very long tail. So check out the availability of, of alternates, especially in script typefaces that you might be using. Next, we come on to the issue of ligatures. Ligature, ligatures are two or more characters that are fused together to make a single character. It's usually in response to a problem. The problem being that with serif typefaces, sometimes you will get a character collision if there isn't a ligature, as is the case with the FI combination. So with ligatures turned on, the, I, the dot on the I is dropped, and the character collision is avoided. It's also great if you're going on vacation to Norway. Now, in addition, there is a different class of ligature referred to as discretionary ligatures. And you can find out whether or not these are available. And they're not available in that many. Thank goodness. Um, here on the open type menu, discretionary ligatures. They get old rather fast, actually. So they're good in very special situations. Next time you're doing a wedding invitation, use discretionary ligatures. You'll also, you also may find certain display typefaces that have special ligatures for certain letter combinations, 
which again can add real personality to your work. So in this case, the ER combination can look like that. There is an alternative to a, a standard FI ligature called the dotless eye, which is, um, to say that it's uh, trendy might be overstating it, but it has been used in some fairly high-profile campaigns recently. And the problem is that when you take this FI ligature and you want to space your letters a bit more loosely, this character combination is going to look too tight. So instead, what you could use is a dotless I, which, and the keyboard shortcut for that is not that one. It is shift option B. So this is a character in its own right. You can also find it on your glyphs panel because your glyphs panel will allow you, in InDesign at least, will allow you to do searches. So you can just search in, dot, type in dotless and it will come up with a dotless eye. I don't know why when they incorporated a glyphs panel into Illustrator and to Photoshop, they omitted that very useful find field. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.